This is Matthew Cratter from Bitcoin University, and today I wanted to talk about Cardano getting flushed, as well as Charles Hoskinson's recent comments on Twitter, which you've been asking me to cover. So let's first listen to a bit of his comment. Then they come in and say it's a security. Okay, well, what the hell does that mean if it's decentralized? How, how does Bitcoin register? Oh, but it's not. Then explain to me the fucking difference between Bitcoin and Ethereum and Cardano and the rest of the gang. Explain it to me. Like I'm five years old, run the goddamn Howie test on it and show me the difference between the two. So before we examine the specifics of Hoskinson's comments, I want to provide a brief introduction to Charles Hoskinson, who is one of the founders of Cardano. And here's a disclaimer I wanted to start with. I don't know Charles personally, and everything in this video has been gleaned from online sources that may or may not be reliable. And I'm sure that Charles is a great guy in real life, so I want to encourage you to do your own research and not take any of this as the gospel truth. There's this book called Out of the Ether, which is a story about the launch of Ethereum. And there's some very nasty things that the author of this says about Charles Hoskinson. And I'm not sure if these things are true. Charles Hoskinson, uh, quoting from this book, Charles Hoskinson would prove to be much more problematic for the group, the Ethereum founders. However, he was described to me by the people he worked with at the time as a pathological liar, a sociopath, and as someone not to trust in the company of your girlfriend. In his early 20s in 2014, he was one of the youngest co-founders he wore a thick beard and glasses and dressed in a way that could make you think he was much older than he was. For the first several months that Joe Lubin, who's one of the co-founders of Ethereum, knew Charles, he assumed he was in his mid-30s. Charles would talk about Creedence Clearwater Revival concerts in the 1970s, blah, 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 but it went much further than that to convince people that he was Satoshi Nakamoto. He'd show emails that he claimed proved that he invented Bitcoin and a few of the people around him became convinced. Charles Hoskinson told more offbeat stories too, like how he got his limp by mistiming a jump out of an Apache helicopter in Afghanistan. He claimed to be associated with the CIA, or sometimes he hinted of his links to DARPA, etc. It soon became clear to Vitalik, Vitalik Buterin, that Charles was a liability. I was kind of caught off guard by this because Charles was always nice to me. Vitalik said. Now that's not the only mean thing that people have said about Charles Hoskinson online, and I'm not sure if any of this is true. This uh, article by Cal Casa called Shipcoin Millionaire shows that uh, Hoskinson has allegedly been scamming Ethiopians. There's a video that goes a little bit more into this as well. And I also made uh, a video about Cardano and social credit scores for African kids. So you can check that out as well and see whether you agree with it or not. If you're enjoying this video so far, I just ask you briefly, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, comment, and share. Now the problem is the Bitcoin is being attacked by Charles here, and the CEO of Bitcoin seems to be missing in action. He is not responding. Bitcoin's being viciously attacked, and the CEO of Bitcoin is too cowardly to defend his own company from this assault. Because the CEO of Bitcoin is missing in action, I thought I'd take it upon myself to try to explain to Charles, like he's five years old, the differences between Bitcoin and Cardano. Why does the SEC treat Bitcoin differently from Cardano? Well, here's why, Charles. Bitcoin does not have a CEO or leader who leads software development like Charles Hoskinson does for Cardano. Bitcoin software development is not run by a corporation or foundation funded by issuing tokens to early investors. Bitcoin had zero economic and financial value at inception, and really for the first few years, Bitcoin had no presale. Bitcoin had no pre-mine or initial allocation to founders. Even Satoshi himself had to mine his own coins using real electricity and computing power. And because Charles Hoskinson claims to be Satoshi, you'd think this is something that he remembers from his own life. Satoshi did not allocate an insider allocation for himself. And when Satoshi was mining, there's good evidence from the timing of blocks that he actually waited as long as possible to mine a block in order to give other people a chance to mine the block first. So he was not a highly profit motivated entity. In other words, he throttled down his own mining. In addition, you know he wasn't profit minded because his coins have never moved or been sold. By contrast, Vitalik Buterin of Ethereum has sold 25% of his holdings. And as we'll see, Charles Hoskinson has been profiting massively from his initial allocation of Cardano, which he's staking and allegedly making $40 million a year on the stake. So this is one difference between Satoshi and Charles. To get your hands on Bitcoin in the early days, you had to either mine it yourself 
or buy it from someone who did the hard work of mining it. And these were very early days. It was very difficult to figure out how to buy or mine Bitcoin, and it was difficult to hodl it as well. Unlike Cardano, Bitcoin did not do an ICO, initial coin offering in Tokyo, in order to attempt to skirt US regulations. Again, Bitcoin had zero financial value in the early years. One reason Bitcoin fails the Howey test, which is a good thing if you don't want to be considered an investment contract or security, Bitcoin is not, and here's the Howey test, quote, an investment of money in a common enterprise, in other words, a centralized corporation like a software development corporation, an investment of money in a common enterprise with a reasonable expectation of profits to be derived from the efforts of others. As we said, by contrast, Cardano had a pre-mine, a pre-sale that has been used to enrich insiders like Hoskinson himself and to fund software development, as we're going to see in the SEC complaint against Coinbase. Charles allegedly got a large pre-mine and has been allegedly profiting from it ever since. I'm not sure this is true, but I found this tweet from Corey Clipston in which he says, I read that the king ship kicker, uh, Charles, Charles Hoskinson, makes $40 million annually just from staking. This actually explains where the shelling and marketing budgets come from. So again, I don't know if that's true, but it would make sense if he has a large allocation of Cardano and he's staking it, that he's making a lot of money from tokens that he just printed up himself. There's some good evidence and some good insight that was collected by the SEC as part of their complaint against Coinbase, where they have a section on Cardano and they're going after Coinbase or listing Cardano as an unregistered security. Here's the relevant parts that deal with Cardano. From 2015 to 2017, Input Output Hong Kong, IOHK, a company founded by Hoskinson and Wood, conducted a token sale during which they sold approximately 25.9 billion ADA Cardano tokens in exchange for Bitcoin at what equates to an average price of 0.0024 per token dollars per token, raising approximately $62 million for Cardano. And then the complaint goes in to talk about the three entities that are responsible for controlling Cardano and its development today, the Cardano Foundation, the IOA, IOHK again, and Emergo, an entity with offices in New York and California that is essentially the for-profit arm of Cardano. The SEC goes on to point out that these three entities collectively receive 5.2 billion ADA following the initial mining of ADA, or approximately 16.7% of the initial token supply of 31.1 billion ADA. And here's the important thing. This is one reason that Cardano does not fail the Howey test. It actually passes the Howey test and should be considered an investment contract for this reason. And surely Charles understands this. These three entities have used the proceeds from ADA sales to fund the development, marketing, business operations, and growth of the Cardano protocol. For example, investor funds were used to enact the Cardano roadmap created by IOHK. If you're a digital commodity, you don't have a roadmap, you don't have a CEO, you don't have a leader, you don't have a centralized group that is in charge of the development of the protocol. And I think it's great actually that they chose the logo that they did, as John Carvalho points out here. Did you know that the Cardano logo was made to look like an anus? The designer wanted to capture the shipcoin essence and show exactly where users will fill it when they get wrecked. And this is indeed a wonderful and appropriate logo for Cardano. As part of this, as part of the SEC lawsuit against Coinbase, we've begun to see in 2023 the delisting of Cardano by various groups and companies and exchanges. Here's an article about Robinhood ending support for Cardano amid the SEC exchange crackdown. And there's also talk that Coinbase may delist Cardano as well based on an interview that was done with the CEO, Brian Armstrong. This is all something that I've been talking about for a long time. Here's a video I made over a year ago talking about how the SEC was coming for crypto, and it would appear that it is really taking place now for Cardano. I think it's reasonable when viewing Charles Hoskinson's rage, his cursing, to conclude that there may be a big lawsuit coming against him and other insiders and Cardano by the SEC. And the real question this Christmas is, will Charles get coal in his stocking? Only time will tell. If it comes to that, though, I really hope that Charles gets a fair trial and is able to avoid having to join SBF Sam Bankman Freed in jail, where he will be forced to use the dreaded mackerel network. SBF was famous for saying that Bitcoin has no future as a payments network. Unfortunately, Bitcoin does still work quite well as a payments network, while Sam Bankman Freed is in jail having to use the mackerel network, basically trading 
old smelly fish for a haircut and other things. And the risk to Charles Hoskinson is he ends up having to join the mackerel network. So we're all hoping that doesn't happen. We hope he gets a fair trial. It's funny though, when you hear Charles Hoskinson speak, you really get similar vibes to the Celsius guys, the Terra Luna guys, all these people who are always talking about how bad Bitcoin maxis are. And it's funny because almost every single one of these guys turns out to be a scammer that wants to take your Bitcoin and to scam you. I also wanted to address the accusation that Hoskinson made in that short clip, which I didn't play. If you listen to more of it, you'll hear it, where he talks about how the US could subpoena a few mining pools and basically launch a 51% attack on Bitcoin. This is not true, and Hoskinson knows it's not true. You can watch this full video, Bitcoin Controlled by Two Mining Pools, in which I talk about the difference between mining pools which are nothing more than node services that exist in cyberspace. And in most cases, they do not custody the actual Bitcoin mining machines. And so if a mining pool goes rogue and start to attack the Bitcoin network and either try to mine empty blocks or do some other sort of 51% attack, what will happen as has happened recently with F2 pool and happened last year with Poolin is the individual miners and their mining machines will just leave the pool. So this is un. Uh, untrue FUD from Charles Hoskins, and, and he knows what it is. And uh, if you want to investigate this further, I will link to this video in the description notes below. But this tells you sort of the angle that he's coming from, where he's willing to trade in semi-truths and untruths in order to make his case, along with a lot of cursing and a lot of very unprofessional behavior. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that subscribe and like buttons. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks all for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.